Hello, welcome to the Intro to Behavioral Health virtual workshop. My name is Dr. Nikki Watkins and I am a licensed marriage and family therapist at the Stephen A. Cohen Military Family Clinic at Veterans Village of San Diego. So I'm going to be going through some slides today that will give you an overview of what we provide at our clinics across the network and what you can expect at your first therapy appointment. Here's a little bit of background about me and my photo. Uh, both of my parents are Air Force veterans and they actually met in the Air Force and I was conceived in Okinawa, which is a fun fact. Um, I also have a, a couple of grandfathers that served in the military and some uncles as well. So the behavioral health services at the Cohen Clinic at VVSD that we offer are individual therapy, that's for adults, adolescents, and children. We provide couples therapy, family therapy, group therapy, and psychiatry services. So who do we serve? We serve post 9-11 veterans primarily we also provide services for family members of post 9-11 veterans. That can be a spouse, child, parents, sibling. One of the nice things that the Cohen Clinic provides that may be different than some other clinics that provide services to family members is we include the whole family. That actually could even include an aunt or an uncle um, and parents, which is a very different um, offering for clinics. We also provide these same services for family members of active duty service members, for National Guard and reservists that are non-active duty, and active duty service members if they are part of a couple. So if a spouse comes in and starts treatment for couples therapy that is not active duty, then the active duty spouse can also join. The primary modalities that we use for treatment of behavioral health are CBT, which is cognitive behavioral therapy, CBTI, which is cognitive behavioral therapy for insomnia, PE, prolonged exposure, and CPT, which is cognitive processing therapy. These are all evidence-based treatments, and these are the primary four modalities that we use at our CBN clinics. So what does therapy look like at the Cohen Clinic at VVSD? We provide brief, time-limited treatment that is focused and goal-oriented. The time-limited is 10 to 12 weeks on average. It could be 10 to 15 weeks, uh, just kind of depending on the severity of the symptoms that the client is presenting with. We also offer for couples that that time limited period can be a little bit longer, just because we know that sometimes with couples, it may take a little bit longer for treatment. We also offer treatment that is person-centered. We include the client in the treatment that we are providing. We want to be collaborative and work together. Many times we do this by utilizing a collaborative documentation process, which is we will pull up on a screen in the room exactly what we're working on on the computer. So if we're working on a biopsychosocial assessment, which means we're gathering history for the client, we will have that up on the screen so the client can see exactly what we're typing in. We want to type in statements in their own words, and we don't want there to be any secrets of what we are entering into the system. What can you expect at a therapy appointment? At the beginning, when you first call the clinic, there's a brief eligibility screening. We call this a referral screener. And the purpose of that is just for us to determine if you're eligible for services. It's very short. And once that is done and you have been considered accepted to the clinic, then we will move into a biopsychosocial assessment, which is just basically history gathering so that the clinician that is treating you will have a more thorough assessment of your history and any challenges that may arise in treatment. We've already discussed collaborative documentation. 
um, the next step after that first BPSA appointment will be treatment planning. And what that is is just goal setting. So the clinician wants to work with the client to set goals for treatment. What has brought you to therapy? What do you hope to gain at the end of treatment to say that when I complete therapy, I have accomplished this goal? We wanna work with you on that. We don't wanna set goals for the client. Each session is 50 minutes, approximately, one time a week. And we do monthly progress tracking, which means that we check in every month to see how you are progressing in treatment regarding uh, specific symptoms. That could be anxiety, that could be depression, it could be substance use, but whatever it is, we wanna work with you to track your monthly progress so that we can see if what we are doing is effective. At the Cohen Clinic, we work to decrease barriers to treatment. That is another uh, aspect of treatment that, or services that we provide that are different than a lot of other clinics offer. One of those is free childcare. Currently, during COVID times, we are offering virtual free childcare. And once we are back in person in the clinic, we offer free childcare in the clinic. This is for children ages zero to 11. And that's because we don't, we don't want anyone to not be able to participate in treatment because they don't have childcare. We also offer free Uber health for anyone who needs a ride to the clinic or back home. Uh, we offer case management services, which means that when you come in, you may have other needs besides therapy. And there may be some other needs that are either a barrier to treatment or they're the cause of some of the symptoms that the client presents with. So that could be assistance with employment, with food, with educational resources, with housing resources, just the, the full gamut of, of personal resources. And we offer no to low cost treatment. We bill insurance, but we also wanna make sure that that uh, cost is not a barrier to treatment. So you can work with the clinic to determine what you're able to to do financially, but that will not be a barrier to receiving treatment. So what are some of the common reasons that people seek therapy? So these are some of the common reasons. Here's a list. There's anxiety and depression, very common. Uh, PTSD, as we are serving a veteran population, is very common for the veteran and for family members. We see people that seek services for grief and loss that can look very different. It can be grief and loss of a family member due to service. It can be grief and loss of a lifestyle. Um, when there's transitioning out of the military, many times there's grief and loss associated with the loss of the station, the loss of the community that was built, the loss of resources that was available, loss of predictability and stability. Also common reasons are adjusting to those life changes, uh, divorce, abuse, postpartum, trauma, parenting, and marital challenges. Common myths about therapy that we've heard. It's for crazy or weak people. That is a myth. Participating in therapy, I always like to say, is one of the bravest things that anyone can ever do. To take that step to say, hey, I wanna talk with someone about what's going on with me and share, the, share what's going on and receive feedback. Another myth is only people of certain cultures attend therapy. Therapy is for everyone. Therapy is successful in all cultures, depending on the person participating and uh, the amount of investment, but it has nothing to do with culture. Next myth, they are going to make me take psychiatric medication or I don't need it because I take medication. So with therapy, if medication is needed, medication and therapy working together is the best outcome or has the best outcome. But we will never make anyone take psychiatric medication, even if you have a psychiatric evaluation and the psychiatrist determines that it would be very beneficial for the client to take medication. We will never force anyone to take medication. That is always the client's choice. And on the flip side, if you are taking medication already, it is still beneficial to participate in therapy because now you will have the bandwidth to be able to implement the coping skills that are learned. Uh, talking about problems to a stranger won't help. That's another myth. 
actually research has shown that it is very helpful just to be able to talk about problems. And when you're working with a therapist, it is someone who is non-biased. They don't have any prejudgments or preconceptions. They're just there to walk with you on the journey of exploration and, go, and accomplishing your goals. And the last myth is I only need therapy if I'm in crisis. And that also is a myth because therapy is beneficial at all ages and stages of life. When you are in crisis, it is needed, but also we would like to prevent crisis. Um, sometimes it's just as simple as I need to talk with someone just to sort out my thoughts to help make the next best decision for my life. What are some of the symptoms that may indicate that it's time to seek therapy? Here's a list. I won't go through every one of them, but just give you some of the ones that we see frequently. Panic and anxiety attacks is something that could be an indicator that you may want to seek therapy. Insomnia is really common. Uh, if there's a lot of moodiness, irritability, hard to find joy in life, um, often crying or sad, seeing or hearing things that other people don't see, uh, inability to take care of yourself or your children or participate in work, uh, maybe if you're sleeping more than normal, eating more or less than normal, or just having frequent conflicts in relationships. Those are all some of the reasons that someone may want to seek therapy and see if it's a good fit for you. What should you know? What we want you to know is that it may get worse before it gets better, and that's okay. It's part of the process. Many times when we uncover some things that we've covered or stuffed down for so long, we actually start to feel the feelings that we have suppressed. So it feels like it's getting worse before it gets better. Relapse is part of the it's part of recovery, it's part of the process. When we come into treatment, we're learning coping skills, we're trying on new ways of being, and we have to try it out. We have to crawl, walk, run, and sometimes we fall along the way. But that doesn't mean that it's not working or beneficial. Medication works best when combined with talk therapy. I mentioned that before in a previous slide. And again, that is only if medication is needed for your diagnosis. Also want you to know to trust the process. I know many times it can feel like nothing's happening. It feels like there's no movement or sometimes we just don't even understand how could this work? How could talking help? Or how could practicing this at home for the next week help? Trust the process. We are using evidence-based practices that have been proven to provide results. And the last thing that you should know is that you have a part to play. So therapy isn't only coming into a treatment room and having someone fix you or provide all the answers. There's a part that you have to play in showing up, in sharing, and being uh, transparent, and also doing the work. All we can do is provide the resources and the um, needed skills to to deal with whatever it is that you've come into treatment for. But we can't do the work. We always say that the client is the one who actually does the work. We're just walking along the journey with you. So you do have a part to play. And if you would like to contact us, you can reach out to us at info at colonbvsd.org. You can also go to our website, which is vvsd.net slash colon clinic San Diego. We also would like for you to visit our social media pages. We have a Facebook page at Cohen Clinic BBSD, Twitter, and YouTube, Cohen Veterans Network. And also we have, if you know of anyone that may live somewhere else, we have um, almost 20 clinics that are open throughout the country. Or if you're moving to another place, you can just visit our, our main website um, for CBA. And I uh, hope this was helpful. Reach out to us if you have any questions. Thank you.